Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. All right, so we're gonna study uh, more about rhythm today. You already know about whole notes that take up four beats, and you know about half notes that take up two beats, and they get the name because this uh, they're half notes, and half is half of four, which this is four, so that's a whole note, and that's four, but that's a half of a whole, which is two, and then that's half of that, which is a quarter, so that's a quarter note. Uh, what we are going to learn is uh, the smaller values of a quarter note. The next smallest value is called, just like this, it's called an eighth note. All right, so eighth notes are uh, the values that are half of a quarter note, so it takes two eighth notes to equal one quarter note. Now, uh, it's just so you know, uh, one thing about the eighth notes is that any note that's smaller than a quarter note can be connected like this, which are called beams. So we, so that's actually a beamed eighth note, right? And so I kind of think of it like this. I have this lonely eighth note here. Oh, hi, I'm an eighth note. I'm just all by myself. You know, I'm just chilling, right? Oh, there's another eighth note, and we're friends, and we're right next to each other. And I got an arm, and you have an arm, and this arm are, you know, are basically the flags on the eighth note. And this flag that's on here tells you how many times the eighth note, a quarter note has been divided, which is only once. So it's been divided half by twice, by once. So it's two of them to equal one. And you're like, oh, you're just like me. We're just, we could just totally be friends because two of us equal one eighth note. And since we have these two arms that are right here, oh, we should just like hold hands together and like we can just equal one quarter note. And that's just so nice. It's just so nice. We're friends. It's, it's so nice. Okay, well, anyway, as you know, these are beamed eighth notes. And, and yes, eighth notes can be by themselves and they have rests, but we are just going to be talking about beamed eighth notes today. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch this really cool video that I found online and you should watch more of their uh, videos but this is going to talk about not only eighth notes that are beamed but uh, eighth notes that are separate so the first two minutes and 18 seconds of this video is about the beamed eighth note and how that works that's what we're going to be working with today the other unbeamed eighth notes is what we're going to study uh, next week, but for now we're going to look at the beamed eighth notes. Um, watch this video and uh, take notes on the first two minutes and eighteen seconds. But watch the rest because we're going to learn about the rest later. But definitely take notes and concentrate on the first two minutes and eighteen seconds. But I'm going to play the whole thing. Here you go. In this video lesson, we are going to discuss a subdivision of the quarter note called an eighth note. In order to fully understand eighth notes, you must first be familiar with whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. If you are not, please take the time to review our previous video on rhythm before proceeding. We already know that a whole note sounds for four beats, a half note sounds for two beats, and a quarter note for only one beat. Just like a half note is half of a whole note, a quarter note is half of a half note. In the same sense, an eighth note is half of a quarter note. This simply means that just like it takes two half notes to fill the same amount of time as one whole note, and two quarter notes to fill the same amount of time as one half note, it will take two eighth notes to fill the same amount of time as one quarter note or beat. Two eighth notes equals one quarter note. Now you may be thinking, how am I supposed to count half of a beat? It's actually quite simple. In a situation like this, the first eighth note in any given beat is counted as the beat, meaning one, two, three, or four. This is known as the downbeat because it is the strongest part of the beat. The second eighth note in any given beat is known as the upbeat and is counted by saying the word and. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Remember when counting eighth notes that each note accounts for two equal halves of a beat, none shorter or longer than the other. 
Count your eighth notes as evenly as possible without shortening or elongating the beat. To further explain, let's take a look at a couple of me measures which incorporate eighth notes. In the first measure, we see that beats 1, 2, and 4 contain quarter notes, and beat 3 contains two eighth notes. The first eighth note in measure 3 will be counted as downbeat 3, and the second eighth note will be counted as the upbeat end, like this. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Notice how when counting the eighth notes in beat 3, I counted them slightly quicker than I counted the quarter notes. That's only because it takes two eighth notes to fill up the same amount of time as one quarter note. Do not confuse this with speeding up the beat. The tempo of the beat remains the same throughout the entire measure. Let's take a look at measure two. In measure two, beats one and four contain quarter notes, and beats two and three are each divided into two equal halves or eighth notes. Let's count. One, two, and three, and four. This is an eighth rest. Wherever there is an eighth rest, you should remain silent for half of a beat. Just like an eighth note, an eighth rest could occur on either the downbeat or the upbeat. Let's take a look at a few examples. In this first measure, beat three has an eighth note on the downbeat and an eighth rest on the upbeat. This simply means that you should play the first half of beat three, but remain silent for the second half, like this. One, two, three, Four. Now, in the second measure, the eighth note and the eighth rest are switched. On beat two, the downbeat this time contains an eighth rest, and the upbeat contains an eighth note. With this, you remain silent through the first half of the beat and come back in with the word end on the upbeat. One, and three, four. Let's put the two measures together so we can hear it as a whole. One, two, three, four, one, and three, four. In this next example, we see that the very first note on the downbeat of beat one is an eighth note. Now, the upbeat of beat one contains a quarter note. You might be thinking, how is this possible if a quarter note sounds for one beat and we already have an eighth note in that beat? Wouldn't that be extending the beat? Actually, the answer is no. We already know that quarter notes can be played from downbeat to downbeat, meaning from beat 1 to beat 2, beat 2 to beat 3, etc. Quarter notes can also be counted from upbeat to upbeat. Whenever there is an eighth note or an eighth rest on the first half of a beat followed by a quarter note on the upbeat, that quarter note sounds from the upbeat of that beat to the upbeat of the very next beat, like this. One and and three, four. Now that you have an understanding of what an eighth note is, in the next video lesson, I will begin to talk about a further subdivision of the quarter note called a sixteenth note. But before you move on, don't forget to check out 5minutemozart.com for free helpful practice sheets and more in-depth explanations of everything discussed in this video. Definitely check out 5minutemozart.com. It's absolutely great some great resources and they're very good all right now uh, I want you I want you to uh, take a pause for a second if you have to watch that again that's fine right uh, but what we're going to do next is speaking in rhythm using the eighth notes so as I'm talking right now I'm speaking in rhythm you know and everything that has sound Ha also has to happen in time right so so that's a real thing time is a real thing now uh, what we're going to be doing is like I said speaking in rhythm using eighth notes query notes and half notes uh, we're not going to really use any whole notes today those are super easy but today we are speaking in rhythm pandemic style oh snap Oh snap! <laughs> oh snap! Okay, now, a lot of you have been, you know, thinking like, okay, you know, I'm gonna be home from school this week, so I'm gonna be chilling with my family, you know, making a pyramid, you know, hanging out with my mom and dad, you know, uh, just doing whatever I'm gonna do, you know, because, you know, I'm not really in school, I'm just like chilling with my family and stuff. 
but no, nah, Brooklyn Prospect is making it to where like, yo, uh, you know, somebody's got to do some work online and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really have time to be doing stuff online. I'd rather be like chilling with my family and stuff like that, you know, just be like chilling with these cool people. But really, like, you know, even though I'm just chilling with these cool people and in between all my work, but chilling with these cool people, I realize that like every once in a while, you know, you know, like I just got to get away because they be, they just talk about the pandemic all the time and just pandemicking the whole time. And so I'm like mad stressed. I'm like, yo, I'm doing this Brooklyn Prospect work and y'all, instead of being cute, are sitting here talking about the pandemic. And really, I'm just trying to go to the bathroom, right? Because I got to go to the bathroom right now, you know, and I'm trying to give you some toilet paper, but you know. You know, all y'all be up in the bathroom because y'all at home all the time and there's like less toilet paper and and that really is horrible. And so you're in a situation where I'm trying to go to the bathroom, but y'all be in the bathroom all the time and I'm just sitting there like, oh, snap, you know, saying I got, you know, I really have to handle things. Right. But, you know, I have to wait because y'all in the bathroom and then in, in between that y'all outside the bathroom talking about the pandemic and i'm just trying to go to the bathroom right now so really lately you probably been hearing these words a lot lockdown quarantine pandemic toilet paper help (laughs) so but these words all have rhythms right the natural rhythms that they already kind of have if you know if i'm sitting here and I and I put on this metronome, right? And it's just like, hey, right? We're here. If one, if each one of these counts is a quarter, right? We got lockdown, right? Quarters lockdown happens right on the quarter, right? Lockdown lasts just as long as a quarter, just as long as a click, and that's it. Lockdown. But then these eighth notes. Two, two of these eighth notes take the same time as a quarter. So it's quarantine, quarantine, right? Quarren, 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 quarantine. See how that works? Lockdown, quarantine. You know what I'm saying? You're hearing these words all day long. So lockdown, quarantine, pandemic, toilet paper, help. <laughs> so... So uh, think about these words as you as you go. A lot of words have rhythms that are in there naturally. And these are some common ones. This was just a meme that I saw, but I've been memeing to share that with you. (laughs) But here we go. Right. But if I'm going to speak this in rhythm and each one of these rhythms is a is a uh, each measure here is a measure of two four. It's real simple. Lock down. Quarantine, pandemic, toilet paper, hell. Mm. Lockdown, quarantine, pandemic, toilet paper, hell. Right? So it all kind of breaks down in time. Right? Uh, here's some other examples, right? Some other situations that you have, right? Right? Because some of you, you know, are in these kind of situations. I'm just going to do this first line. With the click, <laughs> something that you probably have said uh, this week. I have to go to the bathroom really bad, right? Because you know your brother or sister or your mom or your dad is just all up in the bathroom and you gotta go. And you're like, you knock on the door and you say, "I have to go to the bathroom really bad," right? And then you know you just sit and like. Oh my God, hurry up. You are taking way too long. <laughs> so it's like, yo, oh my God, hurry up. You are taking way too long. So you might actually say this all four measures in time. I have to go to the bathroom really bad. Oh my God, hurry up. You are taking way too long, right? So like everything can happen on these beats. You know, we might say it a little bit different, but that's one example of speaking in time. Here is, uh, um, h- here is, uh, yeah. So these are the examples of speaking in time. So 
I want what I want to try to do is see if you guys can guess which one I which rhythm I am saying right so this is the sentence these are the uh, um, you know the rhythms they're going to be one of these two rhythms it just these two bars that are here right it'll either be rhythm a rhythm B or rhythm C pause the recording for just a second and look at rhythm a rhythm B and rhythm C and try to clap them I will demonstrate clapping rhythm uh, rhythm a for you and rhythm B and rhythm C just so you guys can get and we've done this in class but if I'm clapping rhythm a it goes like this rhythm B is Rhythm C is right, but uh, I know I just said pause so we can practice and hopefully you practice, but then you can also kind of see how I did it as well. So I'm going to say one of these rhythms in time and you tell me which one it is. All right. Ready? I'll say it three times so you can look. One, two, one, two, here I go. Knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? But you know, like, which one did I say? Was it A, B, or C? A, B, or C? I'll do it one more time. One, two, one, two, here I go. Knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? A, B, or C? Which one do you think it is? The answer is... Oh, snap. The answer is B. <laughs> how can that be? That that is the answer? <laughs> well, how that could be the answer is, if you look at here, it's like, knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? This would have been, knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? A little bit different. And this one would have been, knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? Or the ba it just would have scanned really bad. I don't even know what that would be. That would be horrible. But anyway, I did B. Knock, knock, who's in the bathroom? Okay. Are you ready to try another one? All right, let's go. Try this one. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. So, how am I going to say that in time? Let's see. Is it going to be A, B, or C? One, two, one, two, here I go. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. <laughs> Do it one more time. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. Which rhythm is it? A, B, or C? I'll do it one more time. One, two, one, two, here I go. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. All right. Which one do you think it could be? <laughs> Is it A, B, or C. Pause it for a moment if you need time to think which one I did. Okay. The answer is A. <laughs> Do you see that? It's like, check this out. Look at this rhythm right here. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. One more time. Please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom. That's how it goes. These other ones are very close, but it would have been different. If I was to try to fit the words in this one, it'd be like, probably be something like this. Please wash your hands when you're done in. Uh, it would be it would be horrible. Anyway, that's these are these ones are bad. 
and maybe this one would be like it would be like please wash your hands when you're done in the bathroom right so that's this different I did this one now look you got another one correct very good job you got another one get it a a another one correct okay so let's try Udomas. okay this is the next sentence <laughs> All right. How am I going to say this in time? How am I going to say this in time? All right. Let's see. Take a look at the uh, uh, take a look at each rhythm for a second and see which one you think it'll be. Right. Or which one it'll scan better in, like how people normally talk. Right. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? You can pause it for a second if you want to, but you don't have to. But you can pause it. I'll wait for a second for the pauses. Okay. You're back. Here we go. So. So here's how it goes. One, two, one, two. Here we go. Mom, we're out of hand sanitizer. <laughs> You know, some of y'all probably are saying that to your mom too, but you really should wash your hands. First thing is first, you should wash your hands with soap and water. That's the best way. So you're not hand sanitizers in, you know, case of emergency. But anyway, but some of you are probably saying, one, two, one, two, here I go. Mom, we're out of hand sanitizer. Which one is it, A, B, or C? I do not know. I will do it one more time. One, two two one two here i go mom we're out of hand sanitizer which one did you think it was was it a was it b or was it c well let's see which one it is get it c oh wait, wait. see which one it is it is a oh my gosh you are so correct you got a another one <laughs> correct you got a another one right okay so it's like so look at this this is the rhythm that i had said before right mom we're out of hand sanitizer one more time mom we're out of hand sanitizer now i'm just kind of like mom no one really talks like that but i might say mom we're out of hand sanitizer maybe i would say it fast i don't know but but people talk in rhythm all the time every everything everything you hear is in a rhythm right and so what you what your exercise is going to be this week is i'm going to be saying some sentences uh in time and you have to tell me which one it is this is what I will say to you, first of all. Do not guess. Listen. Your ears aren't ever wrong. Sometimes we might misread what's in our ears, but our ears aren't wrong. Just listen. Listen to the thing. Listen to it and then you know, mark it down in time and look at which one seems to be the most correct one. All right? Now, uh, speaking in rhythm, is totally fun because we all speak in rhythm and always listen why because you know you're going to hear all kinds of people speaking and a lot of times uh, you can just kind of you know write down the time in which people are saying you know and uh, and score out their stuff you know and and just kind of like actually feel the rhythms of people speaking what what words do we say in quarter notes what words do we say in whole notes what do, what do we say in, in half notes you know we we speak in rhythm all the time so so i just want you to be aware but all right i hope you enjoyed the lesson and have a wonderful time